November 1, 2025, Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point Mike. Today, we begin our series on instrument mastery. I'm going to teach you what you need to know to pass your FAA test and so much more. I'm going to cover each of the flight instruments, how they work, how to use them masterfully. Each instrument tells you more than its name would suggest. In the first part of this series, I'm going to start with what I believe is the most important instrument, the airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator does what its name says, and that's a good thing, because airspeed is what the plane cares about. Airspeed is what makes you fly or fall out of the sky. Of course, altitude and direction are important too, but the airplane doesn't really care what its altitude is or what direction it's going. You could also fly without an altimeter technically just by looking outside. You could also get an idea of your direction by looking at the road, sun, moon, or stars. This is why I believe that the airspeed indicator is the most important instrument, and so that's why I'm starting with it. Let's play a game called, What's That Instrument and What Does It Do? The airspeed indicator tells you your airspeed. You need enough of it to fly, but not so much that your uh, plane stays in one piece. So there's no way to precisely detect your speed through the air any other way. Now you're going to get a feel for airspeed eventually through sounds and vibrations, but you'll need the airspeed indicator to tell you exactly what your airspeed is. The airspeed indicator is a differential pressure gauge that measures the uh, difference between a ram air speed of moving forward and the static air pressure that's around your plane. Air enters the front of the pitot tube and expands the aneroid's diaphragm, uh, kind of like blowing up a balloon. The static port around the pitot tube connects the air to the inside of the instrument uh, to the outside of the aircraft. And this difference in pressures is, gets translated into airspeed. Now there's a few types of pitot tubes that you might run across. A pitot tube really is just a tube. The one I showed you above is actually a pitot-static tube because it combines both functions. If the pitot tube and static are separate, like on a lot of aircraft, you'll have a tube facing forward and then a static port somewhere on the side of the plane that looks kind of like this. It's a circular disc usually surrounded by four little screws with a hole in the middle. And that stat the center hole is the static port. And of course the air here enters in front of the pitot tube and then that value is compared with the static value to generate the airspeed value on the needle. But now if you fly pipers, you'll see a blade style pitot tube that looks kind of like this. It just sticks down kind of like an inverted shark fin. There'll be a hole in the front, one on the bottom and one on the back. And on this one, the pitot tube or the pitot hole in this case is simply that front hole. So these are the two different styles you might see rather than the pitot-static tube that I showed you above. So now that you know how it works, let's talk about what it can tell you. There are colors and markings on the face that mean something. The green arc is the normal operating speed range. You're going to be asked that on a test. Actually, you're going to be asked a lot of this stuff on a test. The bottom of the green arc is VS1, which is the stalling speed in a specific configuration. Typically, this is the clean configuration, which means gear and flaps up, at maximum weight. The top of the green arc is VNO, no, maximum structural cruising speed, and you don't fly faster than this unless the air is really still. The yellow arc is the caution range, as you'd expect. Don't fly in this area unless the air is very still. And red line is VNE, never exceed. It means what it says. Structural damage can occur if you fly faster than that. The wide arc deals with flaps. The bottom is VSO, which is the maximum weight stalling speed in landing configuration, which is gear and flaps down. Now the upper end of the wide arc is VFE, flaps extended. You might damage your flaps if you fly faster than that with the flaps out. Then there's the little area for true airspeed over here. If you look at the top and rotate the dial until your altitude and air temperature are over each other, the wide area will tell you your true airspeed. This is the speed that the air is actually flying by. Indicated airspeed is what the instrument shows because that's all it can do. It's an airspeed indicator after all. There are several types of airspeeds that you're going to be tested on. And so let's go over those now. 
Indicated airspeed is the one that we've got. It's what the performance numbers are based on. It's the airspeed that's not corrected for instrument or installation error or air density or anything. If you've ever taken a fluids class, then you know that longer tubes or hoses and bins, they reduce pressure, and that's all part of installation. As you fly higher, the air gets less dense, and so the pressure and indicated airspeed will drop because there are fewer air molecules to enter your pedostatic system. Calibrated airspeed is corrected for instrument error. It's not something that's really of any practical consequence, but you have to know that it's corrected for errors and that the difference between calibrated airspeed and the indicated airspeed can be several knots. But these uh, differences are greatest at low airspeeds. Up in cruise altitude and speed, you don't have to worry about it so much. Then there's the true airspeed. This is calibrated airspeed corrected for altitude and non-standard temperature. That's why there's that little window with the altitude and temperature at the top of your ASI. True airspeed increases as altitude increases. Remember that. It's also uh, the speed that you used in flight planning, and so you're going to use a computer to calculate it, uh, and I've got a video on that. Then there's the ground speed. This is true airspeed corrected for wind. It's also the answer to, Dad, how much longer? This is your speed across the ground. It's the speed that everyone else in the plane cares about. Your focus, though, is indicated airspeed to be safe. Okay, so now we've covered how the airspeed indicator works, what its facial markings mean, and the types of airspeeds that you're going to need to know. So now we can talk about what else it can tell you, and then we'll talk about all the errors and what you can do about them. When you bump up the throttle, your airspeed will increase, as you'd expect. Another very useful thing it will tell you is that if you have an unusual attitude. Most engineers and accountants have unusual attitudes. Airplanes, like everything else with mass, don't accelerate instantly. So if you notice your speeds uh, increasing or decreasing and you haven't changed your throttle, then you can be sure that you're climbing or descending. When you descend with constant power, the airspeed will increase. You're trading altitude for airspeed. When you climb, you're trading speed for altitude. Your airspeed will decrease. This is how you can use the airspeed indicator as a vertical speed indicator in an emergency. You will do many unusual attitude recoveries during your flight training, and your instructor will cover up some of your instruments, and you'll have to discern your attitude with the remaining instruments, and then of course return to safe, straight and level flight. It's a safety skill, and it makes you a pilot. If speed's increasing, you're pointed down. If speed's decreasing, you're pointed up. It's an inverse relationship, but luckily it's quite intuitive, I think. If your airspeed is stable, then you're not climbing or descending. It's just like driving a car, right? Your car slows down when you go up a hill, and it speeds up when you go down. So there's a few more things your airspeed indicator can tell you, but those things are when there's a problem in your pedostatic system. First off, your pedo port, if it's blocked, then ram air can't enter it, and so the airspeed won't change with power changes. Blocks can be moisture, ice, bugs, dirt, whatever. If the ram air port is blocked, but the drain hole isn't, then the static pressure equalizes and the airspeed quickly drops to zero. And you can be reasonably certain that the air uh, is still out there, but you just don't know how fast it's going. So if your pitot tube and drain hole somehow got blocked at the same time, then air gets trapped and the airspeed indicator will freeze where it is and your airspeed changes uh, won't be shown. With a blocked pitot tube and drain hole, the ASI will act kind of like a vertical speed indicator. Since the ASI depends on a difference between ram and static pressures, as the increase in altitude will cause the diaphragm to expand and it will show an increase in airspeed which of course we know should not happen when you're climbing. The uh, reverse is also true, of course, with the descent and a blocked pitot tube and drain port. Now, what if your static ports get blocked? I'd say this is far less likely because the ports don't face forward, though it can happen. If your pitot tube and its drain hole are working, but the static ports are blocked, then the ASI will work, but not reliably. It depends on what altitude the blockage happened. Think about how the system works, and if you kind of visualize the diaphragm expanding and contracting, then you'll be able to figure out your test answers. If the static port is blocked, and you begin to climb after the static uh, becomes blocked, 
then the airspeed begins to show a decrease as the aircraft continues to climb. This is due to the decrease in static pressure on the pitot side, while the pressure on the static side is held constant, and vice versa. There's usually an alternate static source inside the cockpit that you can use uh, should the static ports get blocked. Now there will be an error, so check your flight manual to see what that error is. Well, that's about it for airspeed indicator. Now you know all about it. There will certainly be several test questions about all this, so make sure that you know this stuff. Now is a great time to check out the other Instrument Mastery videos. So go ahead and click the subscribe button uh, so that you can be notified when the next video is out. It doesn't cost anything like a traditional subscription does. But stay with me on 121 Point Mike.